This is the story of my favorite Medal of Honor recipient. I actually just learned this on the internet. And some people actually believe that he was the inspiration for the character portrayed by Sylvester Stallone, known as John Rambo. This is Master Sergeant Roy Benavidez. Master Sergeant Benavidez enlisted in 1952, in the middle of the Korean War, in the National Guard. He switched from Army National Guard to active duty in 1955. Shortly after that, he completed Special Forces selection and training. And by 1965, he was sent to Vietnam as a Special Forces advisor. During that tour, he was injured by a landmine and was told he would never walk again. This man's only disability is he didn't know how to say I can't. Civil unrest and flag burnings is what he cited as his motivation. And every night, he would crawl out of bed, crawl on his hands and knees, and use everything he could to support himself so he could relearn to walk. He explained on more than one occasion that this brought him to tears because of the pain. And by 1966, he walked out of the hospital. 1968, Master Sergeant Benavidez found himself back in Vietnam. On May 2nd, 1968, a 12-man Special Forces group was ambushed by over a 1,000 NVA. Master Sergeant Benavidez was listening to the entire fight over the radio. Three emergency extraction helicopters had to be called off due to enemy gunfire. He knew that all members of the team were either wounded or dead, so he hopped on a helicopter, guided them to a nearby clearing, and jumped off before the helicopter touched the ground to go and save his comrades. Before he even reached the team's position, he was already wounded in the leg, the hand, and the face. He immediately took charge of the soldiers that were still on the ground. He helped them reposition and secure an area so that they could get the aircraft in there. By this point, he was shot another three times. He didn't slow down. By the time the extraction helicopters arrived, he had already moved half of the team by himself with gunshot wounds. He then ran alongside the helicopter, picking up the rest of the team members and providing cover fire. He had secured everybody else and went to go get classified documents off of the team leader. At this point, the pilot of the extraction aircraft was mortally wounded and the helicopter crashed. When he reached the team leader, he was hit by grenade shrapnel, shot in the abdomen and the back. He still managed to get the classified documents, got back to the wrecked helicopter, and even though he was severely and critically wounded, he was distributing water to the rest of the soldiers on the ground and putting them in defensive positions to hold their own. He then started calling in fire from everywhere. Artillery, gunships, planes, you name it. While this was going on, he was rendering first aid and was shot again. When he finally cleared enough to get the next extraction helicopters in there, he then used every bit of his strength to move the entire team onto the new chopper. He then unalived two soldiers that were rushing the aircraft. He made one more sweep of the perimeter, checking for classified documents of wounded soldiers. Only then did he allow the flight medic to pull him into the bird. As the story goes, when they got back to the FOB, they thought he was dead. And as they were zipping up the body bag, he spit blood in the medic's face. In other words, this man got the Grim Reaper to tap out. 